understanding how refined sugars can cause obesity or cause diabetes, or I should say, set the stage for obesity or prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, you would think would be relatively straightforward. But in today's world, it's actually a little bit confusing. And it's confusing for many reasons. It's confusing because there's a lot of people on the blogosphere who like to have their opinions about what's right and what's not right. And then in addition to that, the evidence-based research can also become a little bit confusing. And if you don't spend hundreds or thousands of hours reading paper after paper after paper, sometimes you just don't really know what to do. So in this video, we're gonna talk to you about the, the direct connection between refined sugars and obesity, as well as the direct connection between refined sugars and diabetes, because we want you to walk away from this so that you really have a fundamental understanding of what refined sugars are and why they're bad for you and how you can dramatically improve your overall health by limiting or completely avoiding refined sugars and substituting them for natural sugars instead. 100% Cyrus, we're gonna have a very important conversation here with you guys today. And as always, be active in the chat box or in the comment section so we can answer your questions and engage with you. Because like Cyrus said, this topic, it's a little bit confusing and not as straightforward as we'd like it to be, but we're going to talk to you about the research. We're going to give you some information. And by the end of this video, you're going to have some very, very clear guidance on what you can do to prevent obesity, to revert, you know, lose some weight if that's what you need to do, prevent prediabetes, prevent type 2 diabetes, reverse the underlying cause, insulin resistance. We're going to set you up for success. So stay tuned. Now, in a previous video, we talked about the difference between refined sugars and natural sugars. If you are unfamiliar with this concept, then click on this video up here and you can watch it right now. Uh, the the, the take-home message here is that there's a very big difference between refined sugars and natural sugars, but yet most people use the term sugar to talk about all versions of carbohydrate, okay? Carbohydrate that came from fruits, from vegetables, from legumes and whole grains, as well as carbohydrates that come from cookies, crackers, chips, pastas, and sodas, as well as carbohydrates that came from wood or carbohydrates that came from paper, okay? Technically speaking, carbohydrates are everywhere, right? So if you just use the word carb or sugar, then it's not specific enough and it can cause a lot of confusion. But when it comes to understanding refined sugars and how they can set the stage for obesity and diabetes, this is actually relatively straightforward. Refined sugars can cause blood glucose spikes in the few hours after a meal that contains refined sugars. Now these refined sugars come from packaged and processed foods and they are effectively unprotected. They're unprotected because they don't generally come with a significant amount of fiber and fiber acts as a break to slow down the rate at which these glucose molecules get inside of the blood. So there's a lack of fiber in processed foods and there's also a lack of micronutrients including water, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and phytochemicals. And so these micronutrients are actually protective. And when you consume foods that contain a significant amount of them, in addition to things like glucose and fructose, then these micronutrients are actually a protective uh, collection of players that can help slow down the rate of glucose absorption and help direct the, the uptake of glucose, the processing of glucose, the storage of glucose, the export of glucose, and the usage of glucose in many tissues throughout your body. Now, diets that are high in refined sugars are very strongly linked to obesity. If you look in the research, you'll find this very easily. They're also linked with cardiovascular disease. They're also linked with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And part of this is due to the fact that when you eat them, they cause this very rapid spike in your blood glucose values that can go higher than what's considered a normal physiological level. And when this happens, they can easily overwhelm your liver. And when your liver is overwhelmed with glucose, then your liver is forced to uptake more glucose from the blood than it wants to, or than it's designed to do. And by doing that, it can then store glucose for excess periods of time, convert that glucose into fatty acids, and then drop those fatty acids inside of your blood. And it can store those glucose molecules as glycogen, which is a good thing, but over the course of time, it can make your liver insulin resistant. And that right there can then trigger the beginning of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So it can be very complex, but the most important thing to understand is that when you overwhelm your liver with too much sugar from refined sources within hours of eating a meal, you're actually doing a huge disservice to your liver that's, that, that can be detected right now and into the future as well. The big picture is what's important to understand because it can get very complex very quickly. A diet that is high in refined sugar is a very strong risk factor for weight gain, for obesity, for cardiovascular disease, for prediabetes, and for type 2 diabetes. 
Whereas a diet that's high in quote unquote natural sugars from whole foods actually decreases your chronic disease risk and decreases your risk for weight gain, obesity, cardiovascular disease, prediabetes, and type 2 diabetes. It can be just that simple. So Robbie, let's go into a little bit more detail now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad we're talking about this, Cyrus, because it can become confusing. And what you're saying there is, you know, really, we want to be kind to our liver in every way humanly possible and everything we can do to really, you know, treat our liver and respect our liver as this incredible organ who does this so much for us. Um, and where it gets confusing is that there is research where human beings were fed refined foods, okay? Like refined processed ingredients and we saw an improvement. And we're not gonna spend this entire video going deep into that research. You can click above on the screen here, you'll see a, a presentation where we went over 18 studies all in one presentation, which is a lot to cover in one presentation, but check it out. And we went deep into the science on this topic so to sort of help you understand. But in short, in this video, the point we're trying to make here is that there is research where refined sugar actually consumed in a low fat environment, improved insulin sensitivity. Okay. Now, does that mean we're suggesting you eat refined sugar? No, that's not what we're suggesting. Okay. But the key point here in being kind to your liver is understanding that first and foremost, you have to reduce your fat intake. And the question becomes, okay, if I'm going to reduce the calories that are coming in from fat, what am I going to replace those calories with? And that's what we're talking about here. We're suggesting you replace them with low fat plant-based whole foods. Don't replace them with refined sugar just because you're having a low fat diet. No, no, no. Let's look at the breadth of research, the importance of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, and the synergy that happens when you have whole foods. That's the take home message. Check out the other videos if you want to go in depth. But if you want support, if you want guidance of what actually is a low fat diet, how do you do that? How do you make it work in your life? Then check out our coaching program. It's really our, our pride and joy here is helping individuals who are looking to, for that nuanced day to day support, the attention to figure out what, what do I do in my life and navigating my work, my family schedule, my health situations. That's what we do here at Mastering Diabetes. So check out our personalized coaching program. Yeah, this coaching program is actually phenomenal because we've helped more than 10,000 people over the course of time reverse insulin resistance using their food as medicine. And our track record actually speaks for itself because more than 90% of people who implement our program exactly the way that we describe reduce their fasting blood glucose, their post-meal blood glucose, they lose weight and they lower their A1C and it happens very repeatedly. So if you're interested in learning more about this or getting started, just go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start. And there you can learn more and you can get started on your path to reversing insulin resistance permanently today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.